Exactly what number is this? She says it's six. She says it's nine. So who's right? Actually, they're both right. They just saw it differently since they looked at it from different reference frames. Now what exactly are reference frames? These are just a set of axes for locating space and a clock for measuring time, relative to which you make observations. I'll demonstrate. Once this car starts honking, all three observers will record its sound. But sound is a wave. Waves from a moving source, like the car, get bunched up in front and looser at the back. So for our case, those behind the car should hear the loose sound waves, a low pitch, while those in front should hear a high pitch sound. When I analyzed their recordings, that was exactly what I found. So what sound was the car really making? A high pitch sound? A medium pitch sound? Or a low pitch sound? Well, it was really making all three pitches at the same time each pitch relative to one observer. Then what if we had infinitely many observers? Then the car would be making infinitely many sounds, each sound relative to one observer. And even if they all disagreed, no one observer is wrong. What each observes is what the sound is. Similarly, if I throw this ball close to the speed of light, its light waves would also get loosened and bunched up, making it appear as different colors. With infinitely many observers, the ball would appear to be all colors at the same time, each color relative to one observer. So sound and light are relative. Ever heard of time being relative? Consider a light clock with two mirrors and a photon bouncing between them. Every time the photon hits the bottom mirror, it's one tick of time. So when I start moving, I see it travel in vertical lines. But from your stationary frame, it travels in Vs. So, since the photon has to travel a longer distance and the speed of light is constant, each tick takes longer relative to you. So, moving clocks run slower, and the faster you run, the slower your clock ticks. So, in Olympic races, Usain Bolt is actually the best time traveler. If he ran at 96.8% the speed of light and took 10 seconds to finish a race according to his clock, a stationary judge would record 40 seconds, to which he would obviously object. But their argument would be pointless since time is relative. So the really mind-blowing idea here is that observers in different frames will perceive different versions of the same reality. And every observer's frame is equally valid. So before you start making any observational arguments with others, first imagine yourself observing through their reference frames.